The best thing about me being a parent, I think it's wonderful to see my children grow up in them developing their independence, their attitude and changing and learning. I think it's to see them changing and growing over time and to see how they love and show love and share their love. I really love that. I think also to see them laugh and smile and be happy and satisfied is good. The best thing about being a mum. I love spending time with my children every night for half an hour or 15 minutes just talking to them or reading a book, though most of the time it's chatting. We play games like Hangman it's every night and I wouldn't miss it. I enjoy watching my children grow and watch them learn every day. The best thing about being a parent is being involved and seeing things through your kids' eyes. My children are hearing and I'm deaf, so I also get to see things through their different perspective. It's so enjoyable being a parent. You feel like a child again and I really love it. You learn a lot about life. Without children, you think only about yourself, but having children broadens your mind. It's always what's this or what's happening when you have children. You're a parent, I love it. Of course there are challenges and you have to work out what's best for your children. But when there are challenges, you can ask for advice and it becomes easier with each challenge and you keep moving forward. The best thing about becoming a mum is the special bond that you have with your child and the love that you share. The special times you spend together and watching them develop and grow. There aren't really any barriers to being a parent, just little things like when your baby is sick and you're not sure what's wrong until a hearing person informs you that their breathing is laboured or their nose is blocked. Or if my older boy is playing with a neighbouring friend and they're chatting away and a hearing person tells me that they're using bad language. So then I can tell him not to say bad words. So there are a few things, but I don't really see them as barriers. They're just fairly minor. I think for me, the barriers were with my firstborn um, and not being able to understand what the baby wanted when it was crying, whether it be a soiled nappy or hungry. And so I would just try and do everything to try and work out what it was and then I would work it out. And then later on, I got used to it. My wife is hearing and you know there are services out there, uh, whether it be community services that provide um, parenting courses and things like that. Now, I can't access those courses because there are no interpreters available, which means I'm actually then reliant on my wife going along and learning the information, taking notes, and then providing that information to me at home. Every Saturday, my son plays football with Auskick. And when everyone is finished playing, there is a speech and discussion. And I don't know what they're saying through that meeting, and that's a barrier. Through the football, there's always chatting, but I'm left on my own. I just have a laugh and play with my son. I miss out on information. I am lucky that my partner can sign, but that's a lot of pressure on her to pass the information on. So, yes, it's good, and I'm lucky to have her, but at the same time, I lose some of my independence and instead of direct communication access, it's indirect through my partner, so I'm the last to know. If you have barriers, you need to ask for advice from other people or their experiences with children. Discuss your ideas or visit your maternal and child health nurse for information and ideas that might suit your home environment, like the deaf alarm to know when the baby is crying or other services that are available. These sorts of things are getting better all the time, so there are really very few barriers at all. I think it's more the small talk. For example, my daughter is now at three-year-old kindergarten, and when I go to pick her up sometimes, the teacher will speak with the other mums. I don't know what they're talking about, but it's things about their child. But they don't talk to me. I have to wait for a parent-teacher interview, so I have to wait. So I don't know who her friends are or which children she plays with in class. So I miss out on the day-to-day -day conversations. 
I think it's only friends. Friends' parents. Yeah. Let's say um, I take my son, who is five, to a friend's birthday party. I know that there are barriers there because they're hearing and they'll be talking and I don't get included. The important thing about being a mum is patience. You must have patience. As well as a lot of love. Responsibility, patience and looking after yourself. They're the three most important aspects. Firstly, because you're responsible for so many things. Their health, their diet, which friends they play with and many other things. Secondly, you must have patience and not lose your temper, get angry or let things become a fight. You must have patience to be able to sit and explain to them in a way they understand what is a better behaviour. Thirdly, looking after yourself, because if I don't look after myself, then I can get angry or frustrated. If I think I need a break, I will tell Sam and he'll look after the children while I have a rest. That way I feel better and everyone is healthier and in a better relationship. I think also you need to have a routine. If you've got no routine, um, everything is not in alignment. I think it makes it go easier if you have a routine. I have also learned that what works for one child isn't necessarily right for my child. I think the most important thing I've learned about being a father is children. I think it's important for them to be involved in the community and also within the family environment and the values of the family. I think in the past the family values really didn't mean much to me, but later on when my child grew up and I became a father myself, I think it really is important. I have changed because I realised I can't be perfect. I can only try my best and that's all you can do. My confidence definitely. Oh yeah. From day one of having a baby, you have to learn more and more and you'll be more confident. You understand more and more as you go. You learn to grow in confidence. When the baby is first born, it takes a while, but your confidence grows and improves. I remember the first day that I went to take the baby in the car. Yeah. I was so nervous and sweating because my son, when, well, my firstborn, he was one day old and we we're ready to go to another hospital. And I thought, wow, I've got to drive the baby. I had to be so careful when I put the baby inside the car. Every little bump that I went over, I was stressing and sweating. And now it's just like, ah, uh, it's second nature. Now you know what to do. I think with my first child, I was more tentative and unsure. But as time went on, my confidence improved. I got out more. I saw other deaf mums and was able to chat with them. And that helped a lot and was good support. I think it's wonderful to see the big impact that bilingualism has on the children. I think learning both Auslan and English really makes them become more advanced in their language with their social skills, which also reduces their frustration because they can communicate and express themselves better. I think that's great. And when they're hungry, they can say food or sign food. Or if they're upset, they can say that they're thirsty. And I think that early communication is important, starting it early. I can see the value of parents learning sign language and teaching their children to sign. If you feel there are barriers and you don't know, ask. People are happy to help. Don't feel that you can't because you're deaf. Everyone does things in different ways, have different beliefs, different values. That doesn't matter, it's good. Be confident and get involved. 